myself what I think about it? Do I want to? Don't I want to? It's just a settled issue. Jesus said, it's, it's a settled issue. Already settled that one. Whatever God says, once I know what God is saying to me, then there's no more decisions to be made. Now, let me ask you again, after hearing that, how many of you really want to be like Jesus? All right. Then I pray for you right now in Jesus' name that he will start a Holy Ghost revolution, a Holy Ghost takeover in your life, that he will invade your life, and that if he has to tie you to the altar to keep you from running away from him, that you will not be able to get away from God until he is able to do everything in your life that he wants to do. Amen. First Peter chapter one, verse two it says, we were chosen and foreknown by God, the father and consecrated. That means sanctified and made holy. That means set apart for a special purpose. Let me tell you something. You are not like everybody else out in the world who doesn't have Christ as their savior. You don't get to do everything that they do. You don't get to act like they act. You have been, when the Holy Spirit came upon you, when Christ made you his home, he took you and set you apart for something special. He sanctified you and in your spirit, he made you holy. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body, you're a tripart being. In your spirit, when Christ comes to live in you, you have everything that you need in there to live a godly life and to behave the way Jesus would if he were here doing it today. It's all in you. It's not a matter of what's in you. What I'm working on is trying to get it out of you. Philippians 2.13, work out your own salvation. That doesn't mean work for salvation. We know that we're saved by grace and grace alone. It's only God's undeserved favor that our sins are forgiven. But then he says, take this salvation that's been given to you as a gift and work out your own salvation now with fear and trembling. So after you receive Christ as your savior, your number one goal in life from that point on should be to learn how to do everything that God wants you to do to let him own you and possess you entirely and to be of value to him. And let me tell you, the more you do that, the happier you're going to be. You're going to get so happy, people are going to think you're crazy if you give your whole life to God. It's our selfish self-centeredness that makes us unhappy. What does it mean to be sanctified? The Greek Vines Dictionary says the word sanctify means separation to God. Everybody say, I belong to God. I want to think about that. You belong to God. How many of you have maybe like a, I don't know. Well, we'll just use this as an example. This is my glass on the road when I'm traveling. This is this Joyce's glass. Nobody else drinks out of this glass. Then I use this glass for coffee. Then I use it to water the plants. This is my glass. This glass is set apart, <laughs> sanctified for a special purpose. <laughs> all right, now you all know what I'm talking about. You have certain things that you own, that you have them for a special purpose. You don't want your kids messing with them. You don't, you know, it's just like, this is for this. It's not for that. It's for this. Well, that's the way you are. You are set apart by God for a special purpose. As far as this world is concerned, we are strangers and aliens passing through. This is not our home. We are not to take up residence here and get rooted in the world. We are on our way somewhere. And while we're making the trip, we need to collect a whole bunch of people and take them with us. you have any idea how long eternity is? <laughs> I mean, e even if you live to be a hundred, which very few people here will do that, but let's just say you even live to be a hundred. That is nothing.
nothing compared to forever and ever and ever. So what? If there's a little bit of giving up something that you'd prefer not to give up or so what? If we do what God is asking us to do now, we can be of value to him. We can have peace and joy and we can be prepared to spend eternity in his presence. Don't just live your life like this is all you got. You're going to live forever. You're an eternal being. And maybe we don't think about that enough. I don't know. Set apart for a special purpose. And learning to live the life that is befitting to those that are so separated. Separation from evil things and evil ways. This is only made available to a person through faith in Jesus Christ. And it is the will of God for the believer. It must be learned from God as he teaches it by his word. And I love this part. And it must be pursued by the believer earnestly and without deviation. I love that. So I'm made holy. The fruit of the spirit is in me, in you, every believer, every person watching us by TV today. If you have received Christ as your savior, you are made holy. You are holy in your spirit. You're holy. You're a saint. You're full of, you're full of the fruit of the spirit. You have love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness. You're like, well, where is it? <laughs> it's in you in the deepest part of your being. You see, God had to clean us up inside and make us holy before he could come to live in us because he can't be anywhere that's not holy. I don't know if you understand that. God and sin don't work. So if he's going to live in our spirit, he had to clean it up and make it a right place for him to be. How many of you believe God lives in you? All right. So you're holy inside. You're holy. But now you must pursue undeviatingly and seek with all of your strength to work with the Holy Spirit relentlessly to get what God has placed in you as a seed with your soul full of that so it comes out of you and people can see God. The worst witness that we have in the world today is you can't hardly tell the Christians from anybody else. And we shouldn't have to think that people recognize us because we got a fish on our car and a cross around our neck. I don't pay one bit of attention to that kind of stuff. It needs to be by our behavior, our fruit, our love more than anything else. This sanctification is an individual possession built up little by little as a result of obedience. Now, I got this right out of the Greek dictionary. I'm not making this up. It is very important that we get about the business of obedience. God is not alive to serve us. We are alive to serve him. Now, if I could just take a little aside here for a minute. God loves you. He wants you to be blessed. He, the Bible says if you delight yourself in God, he'll give you the desires of your heart. God wants you to have nice things. He wants you to be the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. Lend to many nations, never have to borrow. Everything you lay your hand to should prosper and succeed. He wants to give you favor everywhere you go. Open doors for you. But that's not all he wants. That's not all he wants. He wants us submitted. Committed on the altar, ready to do what he wants us to do every single day of our life. We must stop living for the purpose of trying to get God to give us what we want. And you might be thinking, well, yeah, that don't sound like much fun. <laughs> Please.
When we obey God, we have a joy on the inside of us that you cannot get from anything else. You just can't get it anywhere else. Now we can make our flesh happy for a few seconds at the price of our spirit being miserable, or we can let our flesh be unhappy for a little while at the price of our spirit being free and full of joy and peace. Got to make your mind up. Which one is the most important to you? Let's go back to 1 Peter 1, 2 and see if I read it all. I'm not sure I did. Sanctified, made holy by the Spirit. So we are chosen, foreknown by God the Father, consecrated, sanctified, made holy by the Spirit in order to be obedient to Jesus Christ the Messiah. Wow, wow, wow. And there's another scripture just like it. First Peter 1 verse 22. Let's just skip over there real quick and look at that one. Since by your obedience to the truth through the Holy Spirit. We can't obey God except through the Holy Spirit. I have to keep saying this over and over and over and over. I'm not trying to drive you into self-effort and self-determination, but to tell you that the moment that you turn in God's direction to do what He wants you to do, at that moment, He links up with you and gives you the power to be able to do it. God never, listen to me, God never asks us to do anything without giving us the power and the ability and the equipment to do it. You can do whatever God asks you to do. Through Christ who strengthens you. Now, I'm going to jump off the deep end here. We're going to see how spiritual you guys really are up here in Hershey. And some of you watching my television, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, I'm about to step on some toes. So just don't, don't go turn your TV off. Just hear me out. First Thessalonians 4. Beginning in verse 1. We're going to read the first four verses. I'll make some comments. Furthermore, brethren, we beg and admonish you in virtue of our union with the Lord Jesus. That you follow the instructions which you learned from us about how you ought to walk so as to please and gratify God. <laughs> as indeed you are doing. And that you do so even more and more abundantly attaining yet greater perfection in living this life. So Paul was saying, look, you guys are doing good, but I want to push you to another level. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. Hey, you're not a bunch of spiritual dunces. You wouldn't have taken a Saturday morning to come out here to be in this conference if you didn't care anything about God. Some of you probably are, are walking in a lot of obedience in your life. I want to go to another level. I'm glad I'm preaching this this weekend because it's going to help me. I'm so glad that God called me to preach because I have to study to do it. And I, it just keeps me in the word all the time. Keeps me safe. All right, let's go back to these scriptures. For you know what charges and precepts we gave you on the authority and by the inspiration of the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God that you should be consecrated, separated, and set apart for pure and holy living. And that you should abstain and shrink from all sexual vice. Now, we're going to talk about sex for a minute. What a stupid mess we got going on in the world today. <laughs> to stay away from a sexual vice means a lot of things. Sex was intended to be beautiful and holy and pure. And I tell you what the devil has tried to do with it is nothing less than totally pathetic. So now you have huge issues with pornography. I mean, you can't even get a magazine in your home to look at to try to buy some pajamas without half the people being naked. <laughs> so many people live together now before they get married. They think that's not a problem. They rationalize, well, you might as well see if it's going to work before you get married. 
Well, after all, it's just a piece of paper. Let me tell you something. Marriage was supposed to be a whole lot more than a piece of paper. It was a deep commitment. And maybe we need to know a whole lot more about the person we're marrying before we sign on the dotted line. That would solve some of the problems. Some people get married and they don't even know how, how each other feel about money or having kids or, you know, they, it's just some emotional thing. And all of a sudden, you know, they're getting married and take your time with stuff. Don't be in such a big hurry. Very few people now have not had sex before they get married. And you know what, to be honest, I just as soon do something else besides this. I'm doing this because I believe that God wants me. Somebody's got to speak up and say, that's not the will of God. And we suffer for it. It's not that God stops loving. Yes, you can be forgiven, but once we know what's right to do and we keep doing it, there's something wrong if a person thinks that they can just keep doing what they know is wrong because after all, the grace of God is available. God understands. God does not understand that this is the 21st century and that it's okay to do that because everybody does it. We are not like everybody else. We are sanctified, separated, set apart for a special purpose. You know what happens when people have sex before the right time, they take all the wonder and the beauty out of it. Nobody looks forward to anything anymore because nobody waits on anything. We have a huge problem in our society with instant gratification. Everybody wants what they want and they want it right now. If they can't afford it, they put it on a credit card. There's no waiting for things. There's no looking forward to things, longing for things, planning for things, saving for things, disciplining yourself for things. And it's the same way with sex. <laughs> you can control yourself. You can control yourself. The Bible says that we have self-control. Don't let, don't even put yourself in situations where that can happen. If you have a problem, then when you go out, go with other people. <laughs> and you know what? I already know. My gosh. 
There's no telling us how many people have turned their TV set off already. <laughs> you might look a little silly at this point if you got up and walked out because everybody might think, oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm likely to keep this crowd, at least for a little bit. because I'm trying to be unpopular I'm trying to help you and I'm trying to get us to the point where our lives will give glory to God and where we'll realize that we can't just be like everybody else that is not what God wants us to do I was talking to a young man at a place where I go for some business and I'd gotten to know him we talked about the Bible at different times well you know, he was engaged and I didn't really know him and his girlfriend for living together, but I kind of wondered if they were. Well, you know, sure enough, found out, yeah, they were living together. So, you know, we talk about the Bible. He's living with his girlfriend. <laughs> Go to Bible study, live with your girlfriend. And I promise you they're not sleeping in separate beds. <laughs> so he gets married and a couple months later I say to him, so how's married life? He said, it's really no different than it was before. Now, no amazement, no wonder, no beauty, no... meaning because nobody waited on anything it wasn't even special not at all not even special I had dr. rabbi Zachariah to record some TV programs with me last week and he said one of the four things that people need to be spiritually whole is wonder 
We need to delay gratification and we need to wait on things and we need to do things God's way. And you know, some of the television today is so stupid. It is beyond, I mean, it is just beyond, I don't even know how to talk about how stupid it is. Let's stop being educated by the world and let's get holy enough to educate them. John 5, 30. Amplified Bible, wonderful scripture. I'm able to do nothing from myself. This is Jesus. I'm able to do nothing from myself independently of my own accord. But only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders. Even as I hear, I judge, I decide as I am bidden to decide. As the voice comes to me, so I give a decision, and my judgment is right and just and righteous because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and the pleasure of the Father who sent me. Wow. Now, you'd have to read that probably 20 times for it to begin to soak in. Jesus said, whatever God tells me to do, whatever my father tells me to do, that's what I do. I listen for him. I wait for him. When he shows me what to do, there's really no decision to make because I've already pre-decided that whatever God asks me to do, that's what I'm going to do.
Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way